Hi, welcome back. In this lesson, we're continuing to talk about arrays, and we're going to focus on array iteration. So up until this point, we've seen how we can create an array, how an array is just a list of data. We can store whatever we want in there. We can store numbers and strings and Boolean values. We can store other arrays. But the idea is that we've stored things in there, and we've taken things out, and we've accessed information like give me the first item, give me the last item, or we've used push and pop and shift and unshift. But up until this point, we haven't seen how we could access every piece of an array or do some code to every item in an array. And that's what array iteration refers to, iterating over a list, iterating over an array, basically looping through that array and doing something to each item or with each item. So I'll give you a few real world applications, some real examples of array iteration. So a common example is comments and posts. So a blog post, whether it's Tumblr or Reddit, or I guess Tumblr doesn't really have comments, but let's say Reddit, um, and a Reddit post has a bunch of comments. Well, those comments are stored in an array. And in order to display all of those comments, what actually happens is that some code loops through and iterates over that array with 10,000 comments potentially. And for each one, it makes some HTML content. It makes a little li or it makes a paragraph. Whatever the comments are, that HTML is generated in a loop when we iterate over an array. We'll be doing something very, very similar with comments as well later in this course. When we talk about Node and Express and backend development, we'll be using a loop to iterate over an array of comments to print out each comment. We'll also be using array iteration when we make a to-do list. So we've already started a simple to-do list, but when we actually add in HTML and CSS, we'll be using a loop to go over each to-do and make a little div for each to-do, and then we'll style each one. Same thing when we make a blog app, we're gonna use a loop, and for each blog in our array of blogs, we're gonna do something. We'll make a little blog post on the page. So array iteration is really important. It's probably the most common thing that we do with arrays. We have a list of data. Usually you wanna do something to everything in that list. Otherwise, if you only wanted to work with the first thing always or the seventh item always, maybe you shouldn't be using an array. Maybe you just store that item on its own. So we have three objectives here. The first one is I wanna show you how you can use a for loop to iterate over an array. And then I'm gonna show you something brand new called for each. So you've seen for loops before, but a for each is something brand new. It's, it's exciting in my opinion. It's really, really useful as well. And then the last thing we'll do is compare the two. So let's start. Here I have an example of using a for loop to loop through an array. So we have an array of colors that has four items, four strings, red, orange, yellow, and green. And if I wanted to print out each one, if we didn't talk about this, we didn't do array iteration, I'll copy this over here. What I would have to do is something like this, console.log colors zero. And then do the same thing for one and two. And then finally for three, which gives us green. And guess that's obnoxious, but that's nowhere near as bad as it could be if we had 10,000 colors in this array or 10,000 comments on a Reddit post. So obviously that wouldn't really work for us. Not to mention the fact that it's not dry code. We're repeating ourselves all the time. So we use a loop to help automate this process because what we're doing here is the same operation. The only thing that changes is the number right here. And each time we're just adding one. So we're starting at the beginning of the array and we're going all the way to the end. So you can just do that with a for loop as you can see here. So our for loop, our i, our variable, starts at zero because that's always the first index in the array. And then we add one to i each time through the loop. And we keep going while i is less than the length of the colors array. So remember the length of this array is four. So while i is less than four, it should never equal four because colors four isn't defined. So this type of for loop is really, really common. So let me just type it out here. Four of our i equals zero i is less than colors.length, and you don't have to do it that way. You could also do i is less than or equal to colors.length minus one, which is a little bit longer, so most people wouldn't write it that way, but it, it's the same thing. So colors.length i plus plus, and we open up our brackets. Whoops, and what we'll do here 
instead of console.logging, let's do an alert. Alert colors I, just like that. So actually, this shouldn't be all that new. Seeing, seeing us using a for loop like this is new, but there's nothing new here as far as concepts. It's just taking a for loop that you've already seen, a number starting at zero, and we're going up until some other number. And then all that we're doing is plugging that number into an array. So let's try this. And I hope you can read this. I end up with red, orange, yellow, green. And let's do the same thing just with the console.log instead. And there we go. So again, what we would actually do with something like comments, we would do for var i equals zero, and then i is less than comments.length. Rather than console.logging something, we might have a function called make comment HTML or something like that. And that would be responsible for making all the HTML for one comment. And now we're doing it to every item in the comments array. Okay, so that's how we can use a for loop. We could also go backwards, so we start at the end of the array and we keep going until we hit zero, but that's a little bit less common. But there's a whole other way of iterating through an array called a for each. And in my opinion, for each is much nicer to use. It's simpler, it's shorter, and it's more common nowadays. Now, for each hasn't always been a part of JavaScript, so it's relatively new compared to using a for loop, a plain old for loop to loop through an array. It came out in, a, I think, 2009 or so. Um, so there will be tutorials and there are some older books that don't reference it, but for what it's worth, I think that it's the, the best way to loop through an array. Uh, there's a little bit of a hurdle to get over at the very beginning. As you'll see here, it's, it's something new, it's a little intimidating, where we're actually passing a function into another function. So I'll, I'll explain that in, a, in just a moment, but once you get past that, once you kind of learn the syntax and get used to it, and you know when you need to have brackets and parentheses, and there's, there's kind of a little bit of baggage that you have to get through at the beginning. But once you're, you're comfortable with it, um, it's so much easier than using a for loop. It's faster, and you'll see it all over the place. And I'll do my best to try and be balanced, use for loops, use for each, just to kind of hit you from both directions so that you get used to both of them. But I'm, I'll tell you now, I'm partial to for each. So here's what it is. It's a method called for each that's defined on every single array. It's part of something called the array prototype, which is where all of those methods like push and pop and shift and unshift, it's where they all live. So what it does is it takes a function as an argument, as you can see here. So we, we write array, whatever the name of the array is, colors, comments, dot for each, camel cased, uppercase E, and then we pass in a function. So it doesn't actually look like this normally. What you'll see most often is an anonymous function like we have here. So you pass in this entire thing, which is a function. And then that function is called for every single element in the array. So let me show you an example here. We'll just take this code, copy this array over, and let me clear the screen first. So we have the colors array. And then we write colors dot for each. And whatever I pass in will be called on each element. And then typically we'll have an anonymous function here. And I'm not gonna give it any arguments. I'll explain what that argument is in just a moment. So colors dot for each and then just an empty function. And for now we'll do console.log inside the for each, just like that. Take a moment, think about what you expect to happen. I said that it calls this function for every item in the array, and I'll hit enter. And I always forget about this, it doesn't make very good uh, video here, but Chrome will compress all of those console.logs into one line, but there's a number four right here. So it is repeating it four times, one for each item in the array. So an easier way to see that actually would be an alert. And I get one alert, two alert, three, and four alerts. So it's doing it for each item in the array. But that's not all that useful just to run some code x number of times or length minus one number of times for an array. We usually wanna use the data in that array somehow whether it's making common HTML, whether it's saving something to the database, whether it's adding something to a score for each item, but we usually want to interact or manipulate that data in some way, rather than just arbitrarily alerting or console.logging. So the way that we get that data 
is by having our function, whatever this function is, whether it's an anonymous function, a named function, a function expression, it doesn't matter, but whatever that function is, we have it accept an argument. So let me rewrite this here. And it can be called anything we want, just like any other function that we define. So I'll start with a terrible name like I love dogs, which you would hopefully never use in your code unless it really made sense in some situation. I can't think of many though. And what I'll do is take I love dogs and print I love dogs each time. So console.log inside the for each plus I love dogs. And I'll hit enter. And you'll see we get inside the for each red, inside the for each orange, inside the for each yellow, and finally inside the for each green. So what's happening is that I love dogs is holding the value of each item in that array as we loop through or as the for each loops through. So it's calling this function for each item, this entire function here. And not only is it just calling it, but it's passing in red and then orange and then yellow and then green into this function. So let me show you an alternate syntax. Well, it's not really a, an alternate syntax, but another way of defining a function and passing it in. So it's just like any other function. I'm going to call it print color. And all that it will do is take an argument called color, and then inside of here, we'll do a console.log, and let's just do a line of stars there to start, and I'll copy that line. And then below it, we'll do a console.log color, and then again, we'll paste that line. Okay, so we've defined a simple function. Hopefully this is review at this point. It takes an argument called color, and I hit enter, nothing happens because I've only defined the function. But now if I call it print color and let's do purple, obviously the best color, I get stars, purple, stars. And just as review, I get undefined because my function doesn't actually return anything, but it prints three lines. Okay, so I can use for each to run this print color on every item in the array. And all that I have to do is colors, which is my array, dot for each. And then rather than typing out a whole function here, all I do is pass in print color. And this is a really important note that I don't put parentheses here. If I do put those parentheses there, I'm going to immediately call that function. Remember, whenever JavaScript sees a function followed by parentheses, it executes it. So it doesn't matter that I'm passing it into for each, it will be called before we want it to be called. What we actually want to do is just pass in print color without parentheses. We're telling for each, here you go, here's the function I want you to call for me later when you loop through, and I want you to call it on each item in the array. So then what will happen if we fast forwarded, well, let me hit enter first. And you'll see we get purple, oh, well, it starts here, red, orange, yellow, and green. So what's happening behind the scenes is that for each is taking print color and it's running print color red, print color orange, except it doesn't really look like that. It looks more like this, print color colors i, which starts at zero, and then print colors colors one. So it's taking our print colors function and it's actually calling it for us. So we just tell it what to call and it will call it on the items. So for each is really nice because we don't have to work with i, we don't have to write out the syntax for a for loop, and we don't have to access colors i inside of our code. All that we access is whatever we call it here. So color in this case. But remember I showed that as I love dogs, which is not a good name really, but it can be anything that we want. And hopefully it means more than colors i. So again, we can use both of them, for and for each. For each is newer, it's more popular, and I prefer it, but I'll do my best to give you a balanced perspective or at least force you to see both. And then here's a comparison of the two ways of, of looping through. And there's more than two ways. We could use a while loop, of course, which I'll show you briefly. We could do the same thing for colors. All we would need to do is define a variable, let's call it count, and it's equal to zero at the beginning. And then we're gonna do while count is less than colors.length, just like our for each, I mean, uh, just like our for loop. 
And then inside of here, we have to increment count before we forget. And then we can just do a console.log colors count. So it's a little more syntax, just like every while loop is usually compared to a for loop. We have to define a variable first, and then we have to increment it inside the loop. And we end up with red, orange, yellow, green. So you could use a while loop, but it's, it's really rare. Almost never will you see anyone do that. It's almost always a for loop or a for each. And increasingly, it's pretty much always a for each. There are cases, though, where for each doesn't exist, which I'll make sure to point out with some of the browser stuff, some of the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript stuff, when we combine everything together, there will be moments where we're working with things that look like arrays, but they're actually not. And it's really confusing. But I will make sure that you're aware of it. Um, and we can't use a for each then. So it's always good to remember how you write a for loop and how you do the same thing with for each. So that's what this code shows you here. Take a moment to study it if you'd like. The key differences are the fact that in a for loop, we're dealing with a number. So we're going from a number from zero up until the end of the array. And we're actually using that number to access the array, colors i. In a for each, that's abstracted away from us. So all that we're dealing with is a name that we've created, a temporary placeholder, color or item or thing, whatever it is, comment, post, friend. And you use that inside of a function. And most common, most often, you'll see an anonymous function here. Unless there's a function that you want to reuse later on and you want to call it some other parts of your code, then you might define it. You might give it a name outside the for each. OK, so we covered a lot there. Really important stuff. Loops plus functions plus arrays. Things kind of coming together now. Uh, again, I'll do my best to make sure you see both ways of writing a loop throughout the course. And next up, we have a really short, very quick exercise. Shouldn't take more than 30 seconds.